Looking at the, the unfolding scenario around, you know, the ransom and the kidnapping of aid workers, of course, we had the very tragic situation of, a, of a, an aid worker, Hawa Liman, who was mm. killed recently uh, by Boko Haram. Uh, what is being done to uh, curtail the, uh, the rate at which the terrorist organizations are now coming in to threaten those that are essentially trying to do their best uh, for the advancement of humanity in these areas? Is there a scheme to protect uh, some of these uh, very vulnerable individuals? What is happening on that front? Well, so much is going on now, and I want to say to you that, uh, you know, on the matter of those who are still held captive, you know, we are aware that uh, in negotiations have been intensified. Uh, community involvement has been intensified. You can yourself see in the many humanitarian appeals coming from both within and outside Nigeria to the terrorist groups religious leaders and all of that, appealing to their humanity that they let go on these things. New, completely new windows have been opened for discussions and there's a great deal of optimism that uh, this would yield the results of the type that Nigerians are expecting. There are difficult questions to deal with if you, are negotiating, if you are negotiating with terrorists or whoever it is you are negotiating, they will come with their own terms and conditions. The thing then is uh, you make correct judgments on what it is that you can agree to do or not to do. But if it is a negotiation, then there should be readiness on the part of each side. Well, to grant concessions. One of the one of the major kind of questions that has come up is you know the issue of whether or not uh, the the judgments being made in these negotiations have been uh, you know perspicacious in nature because when you look at uh, what transpired when the Chibok girls were freed, we understand that three million pounds were paid to the Boko Haram group. We have obviously seen a commensurate level of increase in in the frequency of attacks since then. Uh, in, in your view, when you look at what's going on right now with uh, Ms. Leah Sharibu still in custody, what is being done on that front to get her back without potentially enhancing the ability of terrorists to do further harm to the country? I'm quite pleased that you are suggesting this yourself because uh, a responsible government, as we have, you know, must ensure that uh, when you deal, when you offer, I'm not a witness to the issuance of money in the case of Chibok or any other situation. I've not been briefed about money if any was given at any point. But uh, uh, assuming that we're trying to, you know, it's a scenario we're trying to construct, you obviously must be concerned that you, you, cannot, you mustn't empower, you know, the terrorist to possibly go get money, buy things like, anti-aircraft guns that they can even shoot down, you mm -hmm. know, your Air Force men and even civilian aircraft and, and so on. On all of these matters, as I said, judgment is being made. Mm. And, 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 and you must balance things up. Mm. Uh, so you've been able to hear uh, Captain Umar's uh, re most recent submission. What is your response? I think he's leaving me rather confused because uh, you know, he, he gives with one hand and he takes away with the other. When he says that uh, there's nothing to show for all of the security efforts and uh, that we keep going back to the same point, uh, Boko Haram is potent and all of that, uh, or had increased in potency and then says then that no, so much has been achieved. Uh, that that uh, but cannot leave you, you know, more confused than, 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 than you are. But they are experts and they have the technical language, you know, to talk about all of these things. So they're entitled to their own views and to say it as they want. But one thing I can say is that uh, this country has succeeded. In fact, uh, we have earned international commendation for containing Boko Haram and for confining them to one very little corner of the country. And where they are being destabilized every day. It is uh, sad, yes, they have taken to hostage taking and executions, 
Again, these are things that we have seen elsewhere. They are not innovating anything because in any case they are internationally connected in Iraq and in Syria and all of these things. When they are pressed against the wall, they resort to some of these things. So it's a matter of time. This too will come to pass, hopefully within a very you know, short uh, period of time. I still believe that it is wrong to carry out executions, uh, no matter what offense is there. This is uh, our military had faced uh, international criticism from Amnesty International and all of that. And we have set up an internal mechanism to get people who, do, who engage in executions and uh, deal with them. So it cannot be right that we are doing that. And at the end of it, every political leader, including our president, must also be looking at the map. You know, there's an international criminal court. Nobody wants to finish their term and be presented for a trial. So you just have to obey the law and do, follow the due process. It may be slow, it may be tidy, and, and, and doesn't give you the quick results. But the alternative to due process is absolutism, is dictatorship. And that's not what we want in, what we want in this country. Uh, Mr. Shehu, we have a lot of issues to get into, so I want to just okay. quickly transition now to the controversy surrounding uh, the National uh, Health Insurance <laughs> Scheme. Of course, uh, I'm sure you saw the news yesterday as uh, the, the protests uh, were going on, uh, mem uh, staff members of that institution blocking the gate. And then, of course, we saw police forcefully open the gate to allow the, uh, the official in question to enter and uh, resume duties. Uh, some people have said that this is, has become almost like the Abamoro scandal of this administration, that this is kind of the, 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 the emblem, if you will, of impunity and corruption within this government. I want to get your response to that idea uh, that you know, the president is not being firm enough and is not uh, being fair in his application of justice on the issue of anti-corruption in the country. Well, uh, sadly, this thing has come up again, as you said, and uh, it's a matter that uh, was in the front there about two years ago. And uh, the reinstatement then was ordered on account of the failure to have followed due process in removing that gentleman from office. It was not to say that he had been cleared of all wrongdoing. It, it, it was not for the presidency to have done that. The EFCC, the ICPC, had launched investigations since those were two years back. Have they concluded those investigations? I'm not sure they have. Otherwise, they probably would have availed the country of any reports that they have. Now, there is so much that is going on as I speak to you now. I'm aware that the Minister of Health is back in town, is on top of the situation, and he has had meetings with the Secretary to the Government of the Federation involved in all of these matters. Did the board follow due process in suspending this gentleman? There are opinions that say, no, they haven't. Again, we just have to do the right thing all of the times. There's, I don't deny the fact that there's a lot of work to do. It's complicated by the fact that this whole thing at NIH has been ethnicized, has been politicized. Even a political party was issuing a statement on matters that are known to them. I will tell you one thing. As we speak now, you know that, that no matter whatever mistakes this gentleman may have made, and, and that is to be proven, I don't have any records to say yes or no, he had launched a major, he had launched a major reform in that institution, which had blocked access to public resources. Money in NHIS is not money belonging to government. It's money taken from your salary, from my salary, if we have enlisted, and we're supposed to get treatment when we fall ill. If you ask the question, in 13 years of NHIS, how many Nigerians have received treatment? Yet you had HMOs, you know, these vendors, taking five billion every month. Money that is just being shared. And somebody came and said, look, this can't go on. And with strong support from the administration, this three, five billion has been reduced to 1.5 billion, 1.3 billion. And even then, administration is not satisfied. We want to see healthcare delivered 
to the citizens of this country. So there's a lot of work to do. And I think that, that, that we have to sort things out.